Good morning, all you guys in the room and those you guys in line. Uh, again, my name is Leron. I'm a family ministry pastor. And, and pastor, and it's my opportunity to get to share this message with you. I want to say thank you to Pastor Michael and Lane for the opportunity to, to both serve here in Mountain West, but also take this opportunity to, again, to share from my heart to, to be a part of the Beatitudes uh, series. Uh, just a little bit, uh, pray for Pastor Michael. Um, every couple of years, he gets, uh, he gets a little flare up um, with some stomach issues, so that's why he hasn't been here for the last couple of weeks. So just pray for him uh, that he has a, a speedy recovery. Uh, so, hey, man, this, this past week, this past week has just been absolutely incredible uh, in a world of family ministries. And I hope that your kids um, have been blessed by it um, and, and through Kids Camp. And like I said, just like you saw today in the family dedication, you saw in the video for Kids Camp, we believe in partnering with parents all the way, all the way through. Uh, we, we put in plans into place and, and practice to really help you. And we want to partner with you parents to, 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 be, to help your kids be the best they could possibly be in all aspects of life. Uh, one of the things that we have coming up is our back to school blessing. We do this every year and, and what we do is we take time out of the service and we bring all of the kids who called Mountain West home as they're getting ready to go back to school and, and we intentionally slow that down and we pray for those students. We pray for the students, we pray for the teachers, we pray for the workers as they're going back to school and every year it has its unique challenges and, and this year is, is no different. There will be some anxiety for kids and parents as they send their kids back into school this year. And so we want to pray for them. We want to, we want to take that moment and pray for them. There'll be some, some fun stuff for the kids um, and the students after they, they leave here, the, the middle and high school students. But, but for that moment, next uh, in two weeks, that we're going to do that. School starts early, so make sure you mark that in your calendar, August 1st. Uh, we're going to have back to school blessing. Uh, you might have noticed the, the prayer walls in the upper and lower lobby. We want you to, there's a piece of chalk there. Take the chalk and, and write a prayer prayer for your teachers, right prayers for your students, um, sons and daughters. And, and again, we are a church that believes in the power of prayer. You hear that every Sunday. It truly is. We believe in the power of prayer, and we want to start the school year off with prayer. Lastly, uh, I'll say this. Um, We've hired a, a new youth pastor. His name is Kiwan Shepard. Um, so parents, if you have a middle school or a high school student or grandparents, if you have a middle school or a high school parent, uh, student living with you, um, you want to be a part of this. this. This Sunday, immediately following the service, immediately following this service in the upper lobby, uh, we're going to have a meeting with the youth pastor. You have to to meet him, talk to him, but he'll let you know, you know just kind of what's going to go on the next, next couple of months here at Mountain West as we plan out the fall. So please be a part of that meeting like, so you get an opportunity to meet the new youth pastor, but also to, to, to know how we're going to partner with you uh, with your high school and middle school students as we go through the year. Uh, and so today, today, that's the last PSA that I have. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be continuing our, our Beatitude series. And, and if you've missed any part of the Beatitude series, you know, go online, check it out. You know, there's just been absolutely incredible, incredible, um, just, just, just truth that we've learned from, from what Jesus says in the Beatitude series. So, so today, we're going to talk about uh, this blessing. You know, blessed are the peacemakers. So bless our peacemakers. So kind of just going to dive through that. Who are the peacemakers? What is Jesus talking about? How do we access that, that blessing? So blessed are the peacemakers. So I have an exercise that I want us all to do real quick. I want you to close your eyes. I promise nothing weird is going to happen. Just go ahead and close your eyes. Yeah, they're online. You can close your eyes as well. I want you to close your eyes and imagine the, the most peaceful you've been. And, where, and, and let your mind take you where that place was. Maybe it might be a, a vacation that you took um, recently, the most peaceful it's been. Maybe it, it was, you know, after you left a job that you didn't really like that much and it's just the, the peace that came over you after you, your last day you walked out. Or, or maybe it's, it's after, you know, you're, you're a parent, you've, you've graduated a few kids, this is your first, you know, school year to where you don't have to go back to school shopping or anything like that. So this is that, pe wherever that peace is, you can open up your eyes. You know, we probably all have a, a built-in idea of where that is, what that looks like. What does that feel like? That, that peace that comes over us. The, the peace in the middle of, of whatever is going on. And the truth is, and this is what I think, that I, I think that, that that peace is good, and we, we need that peace in our life. But I don't think that's the peace that Jesus is talking about. There's, there's a different kind of peace. The peace that, that, that we, we have, the peace that we build, you know, if you're like me, you know, there's, 
Leading up to a vacation, there's, there's a lot of stress leading up to a vacation. You know, there's a plan, there's a planning, uh, all that stuff, you know, getting everything ready. The, you know, a couple days before the vacation is, you have to do all your stuff at work to make sure things are, are done. So as much as possible, you can be done and off the clock and just enjoy your time. And that night, especially if you're like me, the night before is where it's really stressful because it's when all the packing happens and the laundry and the house cleaning and, and you're just tired before your vacation even starts. And then you have the vacation and it's the moment of bliss and you enjoy every moment of that, and you should, and then there's the day before, you know, when it's coming to an end. And you wish it could last forever. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I wish those moments could last forever. Fishing out in the ocean, I wish that could last forever for me, but, but there's the moment of reality where it comes back to reality, and you got to go back home. You know, that, that, there's, so there's peace. There's peace for the moment. And there's peace, but the, the true peace, the peace that I'm talking about isn't just a momentary peace, a peace in the moment, but it's, it's, it's eternal peace. And so our peace, the peace that we built, is momentary. It, it, it's there. It's there for a moment. We, you know, we, we enjoy it while it's there. And again, like I said, you should. But it doesn't last forever. We build it. You know, that, that peace is something that we build. We control. We plan. You know, whenever we add something, change something, take something away, we experience this kind of peace, this, this momentary peace. But a blessing that Jesus talks about in the, in the blessing of the peacemaker, I don't think he's talking about this momentary peace. So we have this gap. We have the, the, the stress leading up to a vacation, the vacation, and then it's after. And, and then there's a, a gap between the next piece. So we're going to talk today about what is the blessing of the peacemaker? What does Jesus mean? So he says this, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And, and in this, you, you see that there's a built-in blessings uh, of the peacemaker. He's not, he didn't say blessed will be the peacemakers. He said blessed are the peacemakers. And so if we're a peacemaker, if we understand that concept, and, and we know that it, it's a peace that's not momentary, he said there's a, there's a blessing built in there, a blessing that will affect not just us, but those around us. So blessed are the peacemakers. So I'm a bottom line kind of speaker. So I don't expect you to remember everything that I talk about. And my goal really is if, if, you could re, if you could remember just the one point that I'll feel like I was successful that day. So my bottom line for today is this. Peace is not a time or a place. It's a lifestyle. Peace, true peace. Not, not the momentary peace. It's not a time or a place. It's a lifestyle. Again, I, I am totally at peace fishing. I'm totally at peace out in the ocean fishing. It uh, doesn't matter if I catch anything. I, I, am, I am at peace, and I, and I wish that could last forever. That place that you, you close your eyes and it took you to, wherever that place was, you wish that could last forever. But, but that, those are momentary pieces. And then you come back. So the peace that Jesus is talking about, the, the blessing of the peacemaker, it's, it's not a time or a place. It's a lifestyle. The peace that we're going to talk about, the, when we look at the foundation of our peace, it's a, it's a lasting peace. It's a lifestyle peace. It's a peace in trusting. It's a peace in believing. You can write this down if you're taking notes. There's the peace that Jesus brought. The foundation of our peace we find in Jesus. You know, one of my favorite scriptures to read, and, and I love the Charlie Brown uh, Christmas videos, and, and I'll, I'll read this here in a little bit, but, you know, we, we always tend to read these scriptures around Christmas time, because it's, it's about the nativity, but, but it really a, a affects our lives, and it can apply to our lives in, in any season of the year. But it says this, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus brought the peace. On the night that Jesus was born, the world was changed forever. Whether you, you're a believer or not, that's just an absolute fact. The world was changed forever the night that Jesus was born. Jesus came, he lived, and he died so that we could, so he could be that bridge and we could have access to a real meaningful relationship with God. So his life was so that we could have that access. So that the relationship Jesus came so we could mend this, this broken relationship that we had with God. And so for the, for the history of the Israelites, there had always been this, 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 this ups and downs, this ebbs and flows with their, with their peace in their land. 
because of the decisions that they have made. They've always been conquered by somebody at some time in their history. And, and so at this moment in time when Jesus was born, the Roman Empire was controlling Israel. They were, they were, the, they were the ruling superpower in the region. And so whenever the people thought about the word Messiah, they thought, okay, Jesus would come to overthrow the governmental power that would be. And Jesus didn't come to overthrow the government. He didn't come to bring governmental peace or, or economic peace or, or environmental peace. Jesus came to bring everlasting peace. And there's a difference there. So what did he bring to us? This is a ministry of reconciliation. It says, and this is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God would reconcile the world to himself in Jesus Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And that he would commit to the ministry, to the message of reconciliation. Meaning this, what we deserve was death and punishment for our sins. What we got was grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Well, this is what, this is, that's, what we, that's what we deserved. But what Jesus, when he came and he died and he, he bridged the gap and, and helped us mend that broken relationship, we're able to access the, the fullness of who God is in our life. This is who he is and this is what he brought to us. Peace is not a time or a place. It's a lifestyle. It's how we live our life. And so that question brings to mind, okay, how do we live out our peace? The peace that we live out, you know, what does that look like, practically speaking? What does that look like in the everyday life? And so I don't, I don't brag about a lot of stuff, um, but, but one thing I, I do brag about, and, and our family, different family members, believers or unbelievers, have come to visit us, stay with us, and, and everybody has said that our house is peaceful. Like, oh man, this is, your house is so peaceful. We really enjoy it. And, and they, they try to put words around it. And somebody, one of my family members said, it's like, you know, I think I want to I move to Georgia because it's so peaceful here. And I was like, well, it's, it's not, not necessarily Georgia or the city or the state or, you know, if you're in 25 traffic, it's not peaceful. Um, but but it's, that's not what, they, so they're trying to put words around what they're feeling. And, and what they don't realize and what they're feeling is, is the God that lives in our house. See, that's, that's the peace that, that, that I'm talking about. That's the peace that we live out every day because we've invited God to, me and my wife, we've invited God to be part of our household. We've invited God to be part of our decision making. We've invited God to be part of our parenting. We've decided, we've decided to invite God to be part of everything that we are. So there's, there's peace in our house in our everyday, not because of our decoration, not because of our location, not because of our open floor concept. <laughs> it's the peace that we live out is because there's God that lives in our house. And that's how, we, that's how we live that out every single day. You ever, you ever walk into a place and, and like it's just, it's just really nice and you, just, you just, just feel so at rest. You walk in and you're like, you know, that, 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 sh- that, that shrug, that, that sigh of just relief. You're just happy that you're there. Whenever I think about a couch that I want in my life, it's that. It's that. I want to walk in and see this couch and just like, you know, just, just drop the weight of the world. I do get in trouble because I, I leave the weight of the world lying around for a couple days. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, so I need to, to keep the peace in my house. I need to make sure I, I pick up the weight of the world every now and then. Uh, but there's that peace that, that we live out every, every day in our life. And, and it, truly, it, it truly is. It's, it is, is when we invite God to be a part of of our everyday, we get to experience everlasting peace. Again, sorry. Peace, the peace that we live out, our peace that we get to live out every day. It's not, it's not a time, it's not a place, it's not a, it's not a decoration or, or the style of a house or neighborhood or, or any of that. It's, it's a lifestyle. Those are, those are momentary pieces, and those are good things. It's not, I'm not, don't, don't get me wrong. It's not bad to go on vacation. It's not bad to, to, to buy the house of your dreams, to, to aspire to live in a nice community. We should all do that. That's fine. But those are momentary pieces. The, the everlasting piece that I talk about today is a lifestyle piece. And it changes the way we respond to the world. It changes the way that we respond to issues that's going on. It changes the way that we respond to our environment. Because peacemakers, true peacemakers, this, this resonates with you. In the middle of chaos, you can be at peace. 
Peacemakers. If you're, if you're a true peacemaker in the middle of chaos, when the world is on fire, in the middle of COVID, you could be at peace. So let's read the scripture to, to, to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. That, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. They also came, there were also other boats with them. A furious squall came up and a wave broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, that's the back of the boat. Jesus was in the, in the stern, in the back of the boat, sleeping on a cushion. His disciples woke him up and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, uh, be quiet and still. Then the winds died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. So in this, I learned, you know, you know whenever, you know, we, we, that, that phrase that I just said, you know, in the middle of chaos, we could be at peace. Because if you're a peacemaker, the reason you could be at peace in the middle of chaos is because you know who's in the boat with you. You know that, you feel that, you know that Jesus is in the back of the boat. The disciples, they didn't realize that yet. They didn't recognize, okay, you know, why, why were we so afraid when Jesus is in the boat with us? You know, right after coming through and, and you know, and, and hearing about the teachings, and hearing about the goodness of God, they were still afraid. And the interesting thing is, all these men, a lot of these men were fishermen. They spend time in the water. They spend time fishing. They, they've seen a storm or, or two, and, and yet they were still afraid. So to live out that peace that I'm talking about, live out the everlasting peace, we get to experience that because we know who's in a boat. Yes. There's a story I heard, um, don't know if it's, it's true now, but I remember uh, hearing it, you know, right around middle school or high school, um, and it was Joel Osteen, and he shared his story, and, and it was an incredible story because it, it stuck with me to this day. He said, there's this, there's this story, and there's this, there's this um, plane, it was heading somewhere, and they just went through a whole lot of turbulence. And if you've ever been through turbulence, you've probably been, been, been freaked out or afraid of it. It's scary. It was so, it was so bad. There's lightning. There's sto- it was storming. Um, the little mass fell from the, from the ceiling. And everybody was just freaking out. And up at the front where kids who fly by themselves sit, there was this little boy. And this woman next to him that was freaking out looked over to him. And there was this boy that was completely calm, completely at peace. And she said, you know, what's wrong with you? Why are you not afraid? Are you not scared? He's like, yeah, I am a little bit, but... My dad is flying the plane. And I remember hearing that story and I was just completely, it's like, it, it, it still to this day, it, it resonates with me of just understanding peace, understanding true peace and where that comes from. And so in the middle of COVID in 2020, you guys probably have all gotten a phone call from the staff here at Mountain West. If some of you guys you probably you loved it the first couple of weeks and then as it went on, you're like, okay, we're good, we're good. Uh, <laughs> But we, but we did that. We didn't do that to ask you for anything. We were really, really and truly, we did that because we cared about you. We wanted to see how you were doing. It was, it was chaos. It's the middle of chaos. So we wanted to say, okay, how are you doing in life? How are things going on in your, in your family? Is everybody okay? So we had a lot of those phone calls. And so I remember calling this mom, single mom, a couple of kids. I think it was like four kids. Uh, and so in the middle of, of COVID, this early on, um, she told me, she's like, it's not, going, it's not going so well. I was like, why? You know, what's going on? And, and she told me that, you know, there's, there's probably going to get laid off, money's tight, don't know how things are going to, you know, go the next couple of months. And I, and I prayed with her. And right before I was getting ready to hang up, she was like, hey, one, one more moment. Um, I know the church is closed and uh, we're not having services, but, but how do I give? And I remember just, just as, a, as a pastor, kind of just the, sitting back in my desk in my chair and and I was like, yeah, you know, so I try to talk her through. I was like, you know, you don't, you know, we, we want to make sure that you're okay. Um, you know, thank you for giving, but just want to make sure you take care of your family and, and, and stuff. And before I finished my sentence, she was like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like I've, I've been giving since I was a kid. God is a part of who I am. and doesn't matter what's going on in the world. I'm still going to continue to give. Yeah. And I was, I was emotional on that, that phone call because I was here as a leader and it was, this is a moment of transparency for transparency for me. As a leader, I was trying to talk her out of giving, and, and she was like, no, it's, you know, it doesn't matter when. I will always be faithful to God. In the middle of chaos. Yeah. 
In the middle of chaos, this mom was totally at peace. So the question that I, that I have, and again, the bottom line, I want you guys to remember, peace is an apathy. It's trust. Peace is an apathy. It's not that you don't care, but you trust. You trust in God. You trust in who Jesus is and what he says that he could do. For this mom, she wasn't apathetic about COVID or what was going on or the fact that she might lose a job, but she trusted God. Peace is an apathy. It's trust. Peace isn't a time or a place. It's a lifestyle. So there's the, the peace that Jesus brought to us. For unto us, a child is born. For unto us, a son is given. There's that peace. And then there's the, the peace we live out. This mom still given. This mom still, you know, in the middle of chaos, still trusting in God. And then there's the peace that we accept. It's kind of like, imagine that there's this, there's this uh, I've been you know, told this way in growing up in church, there's this gift that God has made for us. And it's up to us to accept the gift. He's not gonna force it on us. He's not gonna say, you know, he's gonna take it in our hand and shove it in our face. But he's like, there's this gift that's, that's up to us to accept. It says, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. There's a built-in blessing in being a peacemaker. It says, blessed are the peacemakers for they'll be called the children of God. So who are the peacemakers? It's like, we are. You are. You could be. I believe the peacemakers are believers. That we believe in, in, in this God that, that we serve, that we can be and should be peacemakers. Some of you here in the room have not experienced the peace that I'm talking about. Some of you there online have not experienced the peace that I'm talking about. Not, not the momentary peace. Not the peace that we could buy, the, the peace that we could plan, the, the peace that we could travel to. Not, not that peace. That's, that's the momentary peace. And, the, and those, are, those are okay. Those are good. But, but I'm talking about the everlasting peace. Some of you haven't fully experienced that yet. You've been searching for it, but unable to find it. The vacations are not enough. The shopping are not enough. Maybe your family is not enough. Your salary is not enough. There's, there's all these not enoughs to truly experience the everlasting peace. Our peace is momentary. Jesus' peace is everlasting. He says this. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. This is the everlasting peace. Not, not, not the way the world gives. Because the world, we, we plan our pieces. We travel to our pieces. We buy our pieces. And it, it feels good for a moment, but then it's gone. They graduated and they came back home. It's gone. <laughs> but Jesus' peace is everlasting. Peace is an apathy. It's trust. For those of you who are believers, live it out. Live it out each and every day. It doesn't mean that, that things won't, won't go your way. It doesn't mean that things won't, go, things won't go wrong. It does. Jesus said, you know, take heart. You will have trouble. I've overcome the world. But live it out. Live like Jesus it's on the back of the boat, on the cushion. For those of you who have not experienced the peace that I'm talking about, you have a desire to be a peacemaker, to, to have that everlasting peace. The no matter what peace. The everlasting peace, you must accept, believe, and confess. You must accept the gift that Jesus Christ has given to us. You must believe that he died on the cross for our sins and rose on the third day. And you must confess that you've been trying to live life by your own. You've been trying to buy your own peace 
and that you are a sinner in need of salvation. To have this everlasting peace, we, we have to accept, we have to believe, and we have to confess. Let us pray. God, thank you. Thank you, Prince of Peace, wonderful counselor, mighty God. God, thank you for the, the everlasting peace that we get to experience, that we get to be a part of. A undeserved peace. We don't deserve it. We haven't earned it. We haven't done enough good to, 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 to earn this peace. But you give it to us because you love us. You did not come into the world to condemn the world, but rather save the world through your son. So God, thank you. For those of us who are believers, let us live out that peace each and every single day. To the knowledge that, 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 that we have been reconciled to God, that Jesus came to be the bridge, to fill in the gap between, to, to mend that broken relationship between us and God. And for those of us, for those of us in the room, for those of us online, let us take this opportunity, to, if, we, if we want to experience this, this truly everlasting peace, this peace that can't be purchased, this, this peace that can't be planned. God, if we want this everlasting peace, that, that all we must do is, is accept the gift that you've given to us. Believe that you died and rose again. And confess that we are a sinner in need of salvation. God, this is the everlasting peace that we desire. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.